Welcome back. There are other challenges facing the Indian economy that needs to be addressed for sustainable economic growth. One of the key challenges that the Indian economy is facing is increasing inflation rate. Globally, sharp rise of commodities and primary articles fuels inflation and India is no exception to that. Sharp rises in prices and interest rates have affected in the infrastructural sector adversely. According to a survey, the slowdown in the sector is likely to bring down its contribution to the GDP to below 8% in 2011-2012 as against 8.1% in the last fiscal year. I think with this kind of interest regime, no infrastructure can be built. Uh, and uh, if we have to drive these projects, we will, government will have to really bring down interest rates and uh, allow more money to come in uh, into infrastructures. The slowdown in the sector is mainly due to an unregulated price hike in the key construction material, together with rampant shortage of workforce at all levels. Domestic construction industry had been jostling with steep and steady rise in the prices of cement, steel rods, brick and other input material, which have risen by over 30% since 2009. According to us, in the first quarter, because cement growth has array, construction growth has come down to 1.2%, utilization must be less than 70%. Now see the paradox. When utilization has gone down, there is no reason why price should increase. Very recently, in NCR, cement was available between 155 to 180 right in September beginning and now on 4th or 5th of October they have said now no our price would be 270. So there is almost 80 rupees increase in the cost of price of cement. There is no reason why price should increase by such a huge margin. The regulatory authority will look into whether the fair business practices are being indulged in Major cement producers or any unfair means by which they are trying to derive more profit. These are the issues which we are trying to convince ministries. So far, we have not succeeded, but we hope sooner or later, after these cases are decided by competition commission, something is likely to happen. The industry is also facing severe shortage of about 40% skilled construction worker. The input cost on account of labor in the construction industry has increased over 30% during the course of past couple of years. Inflationary pressure leading to an abnormal price rise in the food and basic cost of living have pushed the wages upwards. The major challenges faced by the infrastructure industry today um, is a shortage of manpower, because of the tremendous amount of work coming up in the infrastructure sector, we are facing uh, a shortage of skilled manpower. But I think over time the economy will correct itself and uh, there will be enough people. The second challenge that we are facing is increase in costs of raw material, primarily steel, cement, which are expected to go even higher. Interest costs are expected to go higher. This coupled with the uh, land bill which is tabled will definitely make some infrastructure uh, projects unviable. Steel, cement and labour are the key components and they alone make for almost 75% of overall construction cost increase. These costs are largely due to rising global demand for goods and commodities. Besides, ever-increasing transportation and energy costs are collectively responsible for such a hike in the sector. With the rising cost, of course, in mega cities, it, the construction cost element to the total price because of the land component is not much. But all secondary and tertiary cities, the construction cost to the sale price is very, very high. And this rising cost in every area, coupled with one of the major concern which nobody has realized is shortage of labor. All these two things put together is definitely acting as a very, very dampener on secondary and tertiary cities. Consumers have to bear that cost because there is no way a developer can bear it. Access to capital is getting difficult by the day as banks have reduced lending to reality players, 
forcing them to take money from expensive sources. As the government and the RBI have put restriction to the real estate sector in raising foreign funds, they are forcing to borrow at a very high interest rate. More than the construction industry, it's the developer developers of projects both on the real estate side and on the PPP side who are suffering uh, on account of uh, funding issues both on terms of debt as well as in terms of equity. I think unless there is an improvement in the global uh, sentiments, equity markets are not going to recover or uh, more equity capital will not be available to project development. According to the research paper by Edwillis, 11 of the top reality players in the country have the total debt of around 38,500 crores. As the interest rates are rising, many of companies are finding it difficult to meet their interest liabilities. Last two and a half years after Reserve Bank of India has uh, not allowed any land to be acquired uh, out of bank funds, it is only private equity and NBFCs which has been funding the real estate sector since last two, two and a half years on the land front. As far as construction fund is concerned, banks are funding it and banks will continue to fund it. So I don't see that way forward is P, the way has been P and NBFCs as far as we are concerned, uh, any real estate player is concerned. And considering that, uh, we feel that future is still Reserve Bank of India changes its stance and starts believing that real estate is not passing through any bubble, uh, PE funds will be the norm. India has the potential to grow at a sustainable rate of 8% plus in next couple of years, provided the government continues its fiscal measures to boost the economy. Government needs to address issues like higher inflation and poor infrastructure on urgent basis. Indian economy continues to post good economic growth on domestic demands even during the 2008 crisis. If, however, demand slows down due to rising interest rate, then the country can end up with higher inflation and lower growth. With this, we come to an end of this edition of Power News. Keep sending us your suggestions and views at powernews at znetwork.com or call us on 011-405-60701. Do join us next week for more news and updates. Till then, goodbye and take care.